Good morning, students. Uh, in the last class, we have seen Donna Laura and Don Gonzalo during their friendly conversation, discovering that both of them were natives of Valencia City. It was actually Gonzalo who asked Laura whether she was familiar uh, or have, has she ever visited the city Valencia. And her reply really surprised him. She said she was raised there. She lived in a villa surrounded by an orchard of lemon and orange trees. And she even told him the name of the villa was Maricela. And again, it was a surprise for him. Because he remembers Maricela for one reason. Though he has met a lot, many beautiful women in his life. The most beautiful woman he has known ever lived there once. And he could even give her the name and the name was Laura Laurent. So now it is the time for Laura to get startled because it was her own name. It was Laura and both of them were speaking about Maricela as well. Donna Laura startled. Laura Laurente? Are you speaking about the girl Laura Laurente? Gonzalo, yes. They look at each other intently. Now it is the time for these old people to have a look at each other. They, uh, Laura looks at him. How does he know the, beautiful, the most beautiful woman who lived in that villa so well? And he is looking at her because he does not, he has not asked what her name was. Since she said she also lived in Maricela, he knows that she might have known something about the girl. So both of them look at each other, try to recognize Laura recovering herself. Nothing. You reminded me of my best friend. How strange. So Laura immediately says, no, no, nothing, nothing. I was just, you know, thinking about my best friend. You know, the woman you have mentioned my best friend. Suddenly I remembered her. And Gonzalo finds it so strange. And Laura adds on, it is strange. She was called a silver maid. You know what people call her? She was known as the silver maiden. So that itself is the title for the most beautiful woman who ever lived in that villa Madison. Gonzalo Precisely, the silver maiden. Exactly, you're right. She was known as the silver maiden. By that name, she was known in that locality. I seem to see her as if she were before me now at that window with the red roses. Do you remember that window? Now again, he remembers her, he recollects from his memory, the girl, the silver maiden, and he has one image in his mind. He says, you know, even today I remember, even today I can remember her standing at her window. She used to stand at the window of her room and holding a bunch of flowers, holding a bunch of roses. And that memory is so fresh, I will never forget it in my life. I have the memory of the girl, the silver maiden, standing at her window, holding a bunch of roses. And then he asks her, do you remember somewhere inside his memory, he has a feeling, his insight has told him that this might be the same silver maiden. But he is not sure. You can only be suspicious. You cannot be sure because he doesn't know her name. And you know, uh, during those days, not many people lived in a house. So uh, he looks at her as he speaks and he's asking, do you remember that window? Yes, I remember. It was the window of her room. Yes, I have not forgotten. It was the room where she lived. She spent many hours there. I mean, in my day. You know, this lady used to spend many hours at the window holding the roses. During those days, I still remember it. Laura, sighing, she gives out a sigh. You know, you sigh when you have, when you try to recollect your beautiful olden days. And she says, I need mine too. During my old days as well, I remember her standing at the window. 
Now Gonzalo describes it. You remember this man is trying to recollect a memory of 50 years before because it's minimum 50 years. He is a man in his 70s now. So it must have been 50, 55 years before that he had seen this girl. So he says, she was ideal, ideal, perfect. Fair as a lily, jet black hair and black eyes with an uncommonly sweet expression. You know, I still remember the girl. She was so fair, fair skinned. Black hair, jet black hair. Again, black and white contrast with black eyes and uncommonly sweet expression. Always having a smile on her face. She was so beautiful. She seemed to cast radiance wherever she was. Now, wherever she goes, people would follow her. Casting radiance is attracting audience. She used to have lot many followers and she was so attractive a figure that everybody would look at her wherever she goes. Her figure was beautiful, perfect. And she was the perfect woman. What forms of sovereign beauty God models in human being. And then he just speaks out one sentence to describe her. He says, you know, God has created us human beings. It is believed that God created human beings out of clay. Adam was created from clay. And after making his form, he breathed life into it. And from the rib of Adam, the first woman, he was created. And now he says, you know, God has modeled in human clay the most or the perfect figure. And that was the girl who lived in that villa, Laura Laurentiis. She was a dream. You know, she has always appeared as a dream. You know what's the speciality of a dream? Suppose you have seen a dream uh, at night while sleeping. In the morning as you get up, you will remember a few things about that dream. You will try to recollect it. Now by afternoon, you will forget half of what you have seen. By evening, you might forget everything. And here and there, you will have the memory of a few things that you have seen, probably a few images, but you will never be able to hold your dream entirely. Always, see when you go to sleep, you wish your friends good night and sweet dreams because you always want dreams to be sweet. And here, she is a kind of dream, a sweet dream, always worth thinking about, but you are never able to hold her within you. So Gonzalo says she was always a dream. Laura in an essay. So Laura is listening all the listening to all this because he is describing Laura of a child. And now in an aside she says she wants to tell the audience. If you but knew the dream was now by your sight, you would realize what dreams come to. See the same dream is sitting beside you. But you look at me, will you ever say that I was a perfect figure? Will you ever describe me with the same terms that you have used to describe Laura Laurenti of Maricela? Never. So there's a lot of difference. So the same dream is beside you now. And that is for us, the audience, or it is the thought in her mind. And now loudly she says, she was very unfortunate and had a sad love affair. You know, she was beautiful, she was perfect, everything was uh, right. But she had a sad love affair. She fell in love with somebody and their love did not consider it. Gonzalo, very sad. They look at each other. So second time again, both of them look at each other. Probably he expected her to say that she was Laura. And she expected him to say that he was the lover. But nothing happened. They look at each other intently. Did you hear of it? Yes. So Laura, do you know about the story of Laura? Have you heard about her unfortunate love affair? He says, yes, I have heard. The ways of providence are strange. You know, you don't know what God has kept in store for you. Fate has made them go in separate ways. So the ways of providence, providence refers to God. The way in which God deals with human beings, it's entirely different. And then, in an aside, she says, Gonzalo. So she confirms here that since she knows, yes, 
perfectly described Laura Lorente and now she is sure that the man in front of her is Gonzalo. She does not know his name, they have never introduced their names to each other but she just speaks out Gonzalo and again it's an aside for us, she has recognized him. So he was her once upon a time lover. Gonzalo, the gallant lover in the same affair. Even I remember the lover. I remember Laura perfectly in the same way. I even remember the gallant. Gallant is heroic. The heroic lover of that story as well. Ah, the duel. Do you remember the duel as well? Duel is fight between two during those times. Uh, you know, it was quite common that people would uh, make a decision by fighting a duel. Gonzalo. Precisely the duel. Exactly. I remember the duel. The gallant lover was my cousin of whom I was very fond. And you know why I remember the gallant lover? He was my cousin. And I was so fond of my cousin. See, earlier Laura told Gonzalo that the girl who lived in Maricela was her friend. And here Gonzalo tells Laura that the gallant lover, the lover of this Laura Lorente uh, was his cousin. Oh yes, a cousin. So Laura is asking. Laura knows that he is Gonzalo but still he says that it was my cousin. Oh, was he your cousin? My friend told me in one of her letters the story of that affair which was truly romantic. He, your cousin, passed by on whose back every morning down the rose path under her window and tossed up to her balcony a bouquet of flowers which she caught. And now Laura says, I know that story very well. My friend has told me through the letter that she has written. She has told every day your cousin would come. How? On a horseback, riding a horse. He would come. And there was a path under her window, a rose path. He would come riding a horse and then he will just throw a bouquet of flowers, a bouquet of roses he would throw to her. And she would catch that. This was a daily affair. Every day he used to come and toss up a bouquet of flowers to her. And it was purely a romantic affair. Gonzalo. And later in the afternoon, the gallant horseman would return by the same path and catch the bouquet of flowers. She would toss him. Am I right? So now it is the turn of Gonzalo to speak about the rest of the part. He says, and in the evening what would happen? He would come back again. And as he goes, she would toss him a bouquet of flowers. He would catch. So it is through this bouquet of flowers that they exchange their love. See, rose is always a symbol of love. So, uh, by exchanging flowers, they exchange their love, they exchange their thoughts. Am I right? This is what happened, right? I think your friend might have mentioned about this as well in her letter. Laura, yes, they wanted to marry her to a merchant whom she would not have. But you know what happened? The parents of Laura wanted her to marry a merchant who was very rich. But she refused. She was not ready to have him. And one night, when my cousin waited under her window to hear her sing, this other person presented himself unexpectedly. And then what happened? One night, my cousin was waiting. Probably they exchanged letters also through this bouquet of roses. So one night, she had promised him that she would sing to him. And as he came there, as he was waiting there to listen to her song, what happened? The merchant came in and insulted your cousin. Yes, that is what happened. He came, he spoke rudely to your cousin. There was a quarrel and later a duel. See, both of them know the story extremely well as if the story has happened to them. But they are not ready to speak that out. And now, Gonzalo says, yes, a quarrel happened. This quarrel resulted in a duel. Gonzalo, yes. At sunrise, on the beach, and the merchant was badly wounded. My cousin had to conceal himself for a few days and later to fly. 
So Gonzalo says, that's what happened. The duel was done. On the beach, they fought. And then, you know, the gallant hero, the gallant horseman, the heroic horseman wounded the merchant. He was badly wounded, which would definitely result in his death. And then, my cousin, the gallant horseman, had to conceal, has to hide himself because definitely Laura's family was so influential and since he had wounded the merchant, he would be caught. So he had to hide himself for some days. Later he had to fly, he had to escape from Valencia, he could not stay there. Laura, you seem to know the story well and so do you. So now Laura says, yes, exactly, that's the same thing that has happened. And I am so surprised that you know this very well. So Gonzalo says, yes, you also know that. I have explained that a friend repeated it to me. So now Laura says, I have already told you, you know, how do I know the story? Because my friend explained this through the letters. Gonzalo, as my cousin did to me. You know, for me also the same case. My cousin only told me this. And in an aside. This is Laura. So now he is sure the woman in front of him, the woman with whom he had a quarrel earlier, the woman about him he spoke in a rough manner was the same old perfect Laura Lorente of Maricela. So he says, this is Laura. No doubt now, I am sure this is Laura. Otherwise, she would not know the story in this perfect way. Each and every small thing that has happened is uh, spoken by her. I am sure this is law. So now, uh, I think we can stop here. And the rest of the part, what happens? See, now Gonzalo and Laura, they have recognized each other. But they don't speak out. Gonzalo does not ask, aren't you Laura? And again, Laura does not ask him, aren't you Gonzalo? No. But they discussed the story. So in the next class, we'll see what happened later, what happened to their love affair, and why were they separated, what made them go in separate ways. And now, uh, in, in their old age, do they really find companionship in each other? These questions, we will have an answer in the next class. Thank you.